Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I've got the radiator off. Um, he's just down here. I think you can probably see the problem now. He's uh, a little bit skew if. <laughs> people that mentioned that actually it's not two bolts at the top it's just uh, one bolt holding the radiator on up here the other side is just a notch like that so there's only actually got one bolt up there and then another one at the bottom here the thread on this bolt up here isn't great so I'm just about to run a tap through it but I did manage to get it out it took a few in and outs in and outs but I got there in the end but I've noticed that the little bracket at the bottom here if you see there he's been touching on the exhaust there ding 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 so basically I think whenever it's had its uh, drop, it's uh, yeah, it's bent the radiator a bit, which has bent this bracket and it's touched on there. And also that's why, probably why that thread's a bit dodgy up in here. I'm just doing this with a pair of mold grips on the end. You can try and use the proper tool, but the trouble is the tool, it would hit the frame. So that's better. That's gone right through. Always be careful because when it's aluminium, it's very easy to mess the thread up. Let's see if the bolt goes all in now. Ah, oh, lovely. Look at that. Goes right in now. So I've got to grab the um, grab that bracket properly. Right, so that's one job sorted. Um, next thing I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna take the forks off because I noticed that just they seemed a bit soft when I was, you know, like jacking the bike up and generally just sat on it, pushing it forward and back. Compared to my 954, my road bike definitely feels a bit, you know, they're both set as factory settings, and this one feels a lot softer on the front. So I'm wondering whether he's lost a bit of the oil. I can feel it. There's a tiny bit of it's difficult to see. There's a tiny bit of. Uh, grease and oil in there so i think the plan is just to uh, pull the forks off and then put the new oil seals and just oil in there i'm not going to do anything else because i might find later on down the line i want to take it apart and put some different springs in there anyways i've actually been to borrow a headstock stand off of uh, Sai from the um, southwest bikers forum if you haven't been on there go give it a look it's good for anyone down in the uh, southwest of england have a look on there they've got ride outs and other bits and bobs they've got a few discounts as well if you actually uh, become a member or anything like that. But yeah, he's lent me a headstock stand, um, which has got the right pin, so I can actually pop the front up and hold it from the stand. The pin goes in this hole here in the headstock, so off the ground. And then I haven't got any weight on the forks at all. Then I can whip both forks out and then uh, hopefully service them. Chuck the radiator and the wheels and everything back on there again. And any uh, bike that you're just about to do the forks on, either upside down, normal forks, whatever, you want to crack off this big top nut before. You take the, sh the forks out of the uh, out of the bike, really, because if not, there's a pain in the ass to try and grab hold of like the any of the tubes here and undo you know undo the top nut at the same time. But and you only want to crack that one. You don't want to undo it fully because it will have some spring pressure on there from what's inside. But to start with, you want to um, undo this top yoke bolt here, this one here, because if you try and crack the top nut off with that yoke bolt held on, it'll probably just well that's holding on to the thread in there, so it'll probably just destroy the thread. So you want to crack off, this one here is just a 12mm, so crack him off, off the tank. and then you will want to undo the clip on, but you don't want to do it yet because I'm going to hold on to the handlebar, if it was on the floor, you know, you'd have the weight of the bike on it, but I've only got it on the uh, axle stand, as you saw earlier, so I'm going to hold on to that clip on, and then put my 32mm socket on there and undo that, then on this bike, it's a 32 so I've got this on a big Big long ratchet, holding onto the clip on. And that's why you crack them off beforehand, because there's no way you could hold on to the tube in like a vice or something and crack that off without probably damaging what you're trying to hold. You know, just be a struggle. The same again for this side. Oh, has to be a spanner in there instead of Good trick or it's a really tight bolt just to link another spanner in that. At least it's done up, it's always good stuff. And what I'm actually doing this time is 
I've got my body against the left hand grip on which you can't see obviously because you can just see the right hand one and then I'm pushing against it there you go so I'm only going to do it a smidge still under pressure from the weight of the bike and now I'm going to whack it on the headstock stand there we go Anyone who's not used one, these are bloody good stands, these are, the headstock stands. It takes all the weight off the front, so... Take that stand out now. So you can see now I've taken the um, axle back out again. It's just down here on the floor. There we go, that one has off now. Good excuse for you to give this a clean up under here. Whilst you can get in there and around the side of the forks, I'm gonna give that a bit of a clean off now. So you see now I've moved the um moved the brake calipers back down hanging off the radiator and I've got all that back on. Filled it all up with fluid. Um it's much more solid now. Like now this bolt up here does up properly and I've sort of bent the tabs in a bit so they grab. It's um it hardly moves now, it's great. Plus this little bracket down the bottom through here. Oh. This one where my thumb is there isn't oh, even just here. This one here isn't touching the exhaust anymore, so it's not rattling, making it so that's way better. I'm much happier with that now. I filled it back up with um, fresh coolant and water mix, so that's pretty much once I run them up, bleed it through, and the radiator is all good to go, really. Last but not least, you need to undo the uh, clip on. And this first fork you've out. There we go, fork tube number two. So once you've got the fork tube off the bike, you want to crack off the bottom Allen key. Uh, see that one there? And you can either use a long Allen key, something like, something like this one here, or you can use an Allen key like this with a spanner on the end for a bit more leverage. Like that doesn't really matter, just you need to have something long enough that it will go right through Now you can take the top cap off and it won't matter because you can undo that with hardly any strain at all. So I'm now going to undo the top cap. Like I said, it's just a 32mm socket and then onto the shock body. If you want something to catch oil, some sort of drain bucket. I'm just going to balance in here, just like that. So, it seems like someone has replaced oil not that long ago.
So I've pulled out the uh, the end bolt that holds the cartridge on. It's just like that. Just a banjo bolt with a copper washer. You are supposed to replace these. I'm going to try and find one, see if I can find them when I put it back together. Um, but that's what holds the cartridge together. So now I've let this drain for uh, about five minutes. Let's see, I can now pull the whole cartridge out. Like so. Right, so I've had a bit of a tidy the workbench because it's a bit of a mess. Uh, now, once you've pulled the cartridge out and uh, you've drained it all, quite a lot of oil, just drained it all out, it's all in there. Like I said, it doesn't look too bad. I reckon it's been replaced not a long ago. Um, next stage is to pop the dust seals out, which is just these ones here. I try and use a roundy-ish, like a worn-out screwdriver really, so you don't pierce it too badly. And then you just want to get in, give it a little pry up that. Same again for this side. Gently, gently work your way around like that. Lovely job, eh? So that dust series should be fine to reuse again. To be fair, so you come off fairly easy. Try and keep everything as clean as possible whilst you're doing this. So dust seal. What you've got to do next after that, I don't know where you can see it on the camera, but there's a sir clip in there. So you've got to get out of now, which can be a bit of a fiddle. Just have a little go, see if I can get another pick. There you go. I was quite lucky then. If you just get the pick on the edge of the um the edge of the little tabs that are hanging out there. You can do that. And then next. So, you've now got, uh, yeah, you've got a couple of bushes, then like a washer, and the main fork seal. So, I flip it around like that. See, they've got a little, uh, got a little split in them. So, you just get a little screwdriver, a little bigger screwdriver. Open them up. So I like to work. How I take them off, I put them down. So I take that off like that. down next one slide off put him down slide the washer off put him down slide the forks off now you want to be careful when we refit the roof fork seal there's a couple ridges here I'll show you what I do normally when I do that send these down and then like I say you got your clip and then I won't bother putting the dust cover. Obviously I'm, I'm not replacing the dust cover because he's fine, but if you were, you'd take that off, put a new one on. So next I'll be putting the new fork seals on and basically just doing the reverse really. That's pretty much the end of the video guys. Uh, cheers for watching. Like I say, um, next episode I should be putting that back together. Um, should be putting the rest of the, well, once I was back together and back on the bike, I'll then have the wheels back on. Um, and then everything else will be back together. So keep an eye, uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Love you, Jubbly.